Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Sam Crawley. Um, uh, and yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, data manipulation with R today. Um, so yeah, my, very briefly, my background, I uh, worked as a developer for many years, not with R, with other languages. Um, uh, but about four years ago, um, I started doing a PhD uh, in political science, and uh, which I've now finished. Um, and during that time, uh, I, um, thank you, um, during that time, uh, I learned a bit of R, um, reasonable amount of R, uh, as part of my work. Um, and so, yeah, I, I thought I'd talk a little bit about it um, today. Um, and yeah, so before we get started, just to calibrate a bit, um, who here has done, you know, a little bit of R, dabbled in R? Okay, and who here is kind of an R, you know, pretty confident with R? Okay, good, um, that's good. Um, all right, um, so yeah, so I'll go over a little bit about some kind of R basics, and then I'll talk about, um, yeah, one of its really useful features, which is data manipulation, um, which could be useful for quite a lot of you. Um, so when you're learning R, one of the, the kind of, uh, the first things you have to work out is um, how do you pronounce it? Uh, and if you've got a, a bit of a New Zealand accent, which a lot of us do, um, it can end up uh, sounding a bit like this. Um, and people get a bit confused when you say, I'm doing R. Um, and then what happens is you can uh, tend to overcompensate, and then you say R, and you sound a bit like a pirate. Um, yeah, so... That's, yeah, that's definitely one of the first things you need to focus on if you want to learn a bit of R. Um, just some history of R. Um, so it's a descendant of uh, a language called S, which is a um, statistical language. Um, and it was actually originally developed um, uh, by some, um, uh, some academics at the University of Auckland uh, in, back in 91. Um, so a pretty strong New Zealand uh, connection. Um, and it was uh, released under GPL in '93, uh, and yeah, it's because partly because of its origins, um, but partly just um, how it's used. It's got a pretty strong connection with academia. It's pretty widely used in academia, and a lot of um, statistici statisticians use it to kind of implement their new statistical techniques with it, uh, and kind of publish papers um, to go with that. Uh, and yeah, it's um, pretty pretty hot right now. Um, despite being, you know, a 30-year-old language, it's probably at its peak of, of popularity right now, um, which is kind of interesting. And that's driven by the, the sort of the rise of data science and data viz. Um, yeah, we've already heard this, um, these data science jobs going around at the moment. Um, so some of the um, um, well, strengths of R, um, yeah, it's known as a statistical language. Um, there's all sorts of um, really interesting statistical techniques you can do. Um, uh, if you're sort of a, um, a, a kind of um, web developer or something, that's probably not too much use to you, though. Um, uh, it's really good for data viz. Um, so this is a graphic uh, made by the BBC. Um, they do a lot of their data viz um, for web and, and I'm assuming TV uh, in R now. So um, this is one they did um, to, for the US election in 2018. Um, Another strength of R is uh, CRAN, um, you know, kind of taken from um, the Perl CPAN, uh, but it has its own yeah, package network and, and system, uh, and lots of really cool stuff on there. Um, R Studio uh, is uh, a freely available IDE, um, which is, uh, is really well designed for the specific types of stuff you're often doing in R. Um, uh, so that's a, a really useful tool. Um, it's got a really good community around it. Um, this is a guy called Hadley Wickham, um, who is probably one of the most sort of prominent R developers or you know, rock stars, you could say. Um, he's actually a Kiwi. Um, uh, he lives in um, Texas now, I think, and works for R Studio. Um, but yeah, so quite a, another kind of Kiwi connection um, to the language. Uh, and yeah, so a lot of you have probably heard about R. You think statistics and maybe data viz. Um, but another really thing that's really good at is um, data manipulation. Um, and so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, and uh, usually you use this package called dplyr. Um, and we'll get into um, how to use that shortly. Um, so some of the weaknesses of our um, the kind of namespaces um, that it has are kind of quite limited. 
It does have them, but they're just a bit of a pain to work with. Um, OOP, object oriented, it's, it's probably, again, not its strength. It's more sort of um, functional programming. You can do OOP, but it's, yeah, it's not the best. Uh, and documentation, like compared to, you know, other languages, you know, Python, Perl, those sort of languages, uh, tend to have really good documentation for all their main packages. R is getting better, but there's some kind of holes, which, yeah, sometimes I find a bit annoying. Um, so I'll go through some of the kind of basics of the syntax, um, just so you've got to get a flavor for it. And this will sort of lead us into dplyr and um, why it's so useful and, and why it is the way it is. Uh, so in R, everything is a vector. Um, and so if, for, for instance, you do this, um, so backwards arrow in R is assignment. Um, you can use equals, but it's not as cool. Um, so if you um, assign the string bar to foo, um, you'll actually get a vector. Um, so not a simple string, it's a vector. And so if you call is vector on it, um, you'll get true. Um, so kind of an interesting approach. Um, and um, there's some, um, oh, and so if you wanted to do a full vector, um, nothing too out of the ordinary here. You can define a whole vector um, of multiple values. Uh, you can access it, or you can access multiple values at once. And yes, if you note here, indexes start at one. <laughs> and I know, I know that will disgust many of you, but uh, you know it is what it is. Uh, and that—that's sorry. Um, oh, sorry, yes, the C is just, um, it's, it stands for concatenate, um, and in a sense it means concatenate a vector of values together. Um, yes, okay, um, so, but the fact that everything is a vector um, means that it has some cool kind of consequences. So, for instance, if you uh, create a vector called X and assign it um, values 1 to 4, and another vector called Y, assign it values 6 to 9, and you add those two vectors together, um, it will just add each value in the vector together. Um, so you don't need any loops. Uh, you can also do logical expressions here. Um, so check if x is greater than 2, uh, and you'll get a vector of logical values to a false and to a true. Um, so that's quite useful. Um, you can also, um, a lot of the built-in functions are vectorized. Um, so if you have uh, this uh, vector foo, and you call paste on it, which is a built-in uh, uh, function which is just concatenating strings. Um, it will concatenate high to the beginning of each value uh, in that vector, uh, and it automatically puts a space in between them. Um, so yeah, quite a cool thing to do. You don't need any, any loops. Um, so that's vectors. Uh, there's also another built-in um, uh, type of um, uh, data uh, called a data frame. Uh, and that's basically a, a table where each column is a vector. So if we create this um, data, we create a data frame called um, df, and we have two columns on it. The first one is called name, which has those values, value, which has those values. And in our studio, we can display that as a table quite easily. Um, so that's what we get. Um, so that's quite a useful thing to have built into the language. Uh, and there's some syntax here, um, which I'll just go over quickly, and this is where things start to get a little bit um, problematic, and, and um, we'll sort of look at the solutions to these problems uh, shortly. Um, so you can reference the first value of the first column, so you get back foo in that example. You can also get back the underlying vector of that column. Um, you can get it by the number, or you can get it by the name of that column that you set using this dollar, so df dollar name gets you back the name column, and you get the vector back. You can also start to do some kind of querying here um, by doing, um, by looking for the, co uh, the values in the column name that equal foo. Uh, and that will bring back, this is a data frame that it's returning you, so you're returning back um, every row in that data frame where um, the name column equals foo, and you'll get back um, a data frame, in this case, only one row in that data frame. Uh, and so this kind of query syntax, you can start to do some really funky stuff, uh, but it starts to get a bit messy. So you know this, you might want to check something that equals uh, foo, uh, check that things are not NA. So NA is kind of a, a, an empty value, 
null kind of um, value. So you might want to find things that are not NA in column two. You might want to find things that are um, in column three are, are greater than column four. And, and so do kind of really complex query like that. Um, uh, but you can see the syntax is starting to get a bit messy here. Um, also note this comma. Um, this comma basically means that um, anything after that is the list of columns you want to get back. So often you want all the columns back, so you just put the co comma by itself. Uh, if you leave that comma off, it means something completely different and um, you'll get very confused as I have many times myself. Um, so the syntax here, not the greatest. Um, and this is referred to as base R syntax. Um, and so to kind of clean things up, and, and not just the syntax, but a, a whole lot of things in R for an older language, um, we have a, a kind of set of packages called the tidyverse, uh, and one of one called, um, in particular, called dplyr, which is probably the, the sort of most important package in, in the tidyverse. But there's a whole, whole lot of others. Um, and so this is meant to kind of clean, you know, a lot of languages go through this phase where they're 30 years old, got a lot of cruft around, and they try and tidy everything up. And so that's what tidyverse uh, tries to do. Uh, and so I'm going to look at um, some of the syntax of dplyr. Um, this you know, will be um, probably quite a lot, but we'll kind of go through it and hopefully you'll get a, a feel for it. Um, so dplyr introduces its own grammar. So if we had a, a data frame called data, um, it introduces this pipe symbol, this percent uh, greater than percent. And this is kind of a, a functional programming type thing where um, what's the, the, it'll pass the, what's on the left of the pipe to the first argument of what's on the right. Um, so you kind of create a pipeline. So we're passing this data frame to filter, and then we're calling select. So filter is um, filtering on a value. Um, and so in this case, we're looking whether foo is equals bar. And then select is similar to SQL, um, is selecting a particular column. Um, the other thing to notice, um, I didn't point it out on the previous slide, but um, there's a lot of repetition in that base R syntax where you're having to put df dollar name, df blah, blah, blah. You're having to repeat the name of the variable multiple times. Um, dplyr kind of moves, removes that. So when, you talk, when you're referencing a column, you just put the name of the column. So it cleans it up a lot. Um, and you can do all the sort of things you might want to do, similar to uh, SQL, but um, but with a kind of full-fledged programming language. Um, so you mutate, you know, similar to update. Um, if you wanted to uh, uh, append um, the val variable, uh, the value high to the start of every ver value in foo, um, you can just do this. Um, you can also create new columns through mutate. Um, you can also do summarizing. Um, so, for instance, you might want to group by a particular variable uh, and then summarize. So create a new column called mean uh, and calculate the mean on everything in the bar column. Um, you can also do some really um, kind of powerful stuff with selecting particular columns. Um, so select, um, this is called tidy selection, and it, it, um, it's not just in select, it's in some of these other functions um, that are available. So, for instance, the minus is negation, so select every column except bar. You can select every column that starts with a particular letter. Uh, you can also select based on the type of the column, so uh, the vectors um, that are the columns, they have an underlying data type, um, so they could be numeric or character and, and a few other types. Um, so this will select every column that uh, is of type numeric. You can also do and use some of this kind of tidy selection uh, to mutate multiple columns at the same time in one statement. Um, so this, uh, and that's using this by using this word across. So in this case, we'll change the foo and bar uh, columns, and we'll call round. So we'll round those, uh, assuming they're numeric columns. Um, so we can do that in, in one statement. This one um, will select every column that is of type character uh, and will paste um, high to the end of that. And so this dot x, so this tilde is, is a, a lambda and the dot x is replaced um, for the, the column. Um, and, uh, uh, and yeah, so you can hopefully see that you can do some quite um, powerful 
um, operations in fairly kind of succinct code. Um, and the other thing to note about it is it's very kind of column oriented. So you're trying to find particular columns and do different operations uh, on those columns. Um, so another thing um, that uh, is done a lot in R and, and DeepLyR supports um, is um, reshaping of your data. And um, this is yeah, kind of a concept I hadn't really come across before, but um, I find really useful. Um, and that is taking your data and um, shaping it to be what's called long format um, or longer format. Uh, and in longer format, um, I'll, I'll have an example in a minute, but basically you're trying to get every row in the, in the data sets only have one actual piece of data and the rest are kind of index columns. Uh, and then from, from longer format, you can convert to wider format. Uh, and so in longer format, it's, it tends to be much easier to manipulate that data and do, um, do some kind of powerful transformations and that sort of thing with it. Um, and so and dplyr supports this with uh, functions called pivot longer and pivot wider. Um, so um, probably need to kind of use an example to explain this. Um, and so I'll use everyone's favorite topic, um, which is COVID. Um, and so I grabbed some data from uh, the MOH website. They've got a CSV of activity from the COVID app. Um, and so I've, I've taken it, I've basically taken the CSV straight from the website, loaded it into R, which is into a data frame, which is quite straightforward. Uh, and I've taken a few of the columns out, but see we've got for every day, um, we've got a start time and an end time. Uh, and we've got how many app registrations, how many scans, QR code scans, how many manual entries, and how many people had Bluetooth active over the last 24 hours. Uh, and so this, this is just the, obviously a snippet, and this is um, uh, the first, uh, going back to the 19th of May last year, so before anyone was really using it much. Uh, and so let's imagine that we wanted to take this data and we wanted to calculate um, the value of each of these, or the mean of each of these columns per month. So for each month, we wanted to figure out what is the average number of scans per day for that month. So how do we do this in dplyr? Um, well, the first thing is um, this data is not in long format because we've got for each row, this is kind of the identifier. Uh, and we've got four pieces of data, one for each of those uh, variables there. So we need to make it into longer format. Um, and so we call this pivot longer and basically Slightly, I think it seems slightly counterintuitive to me, but you give it the, the list of columns that you want to make longer. Um, and, and really, I think it makes more sense to tell it the list of uh, columns that are the, the identifier columns. Um, so I've kind of inverted that by saying, I don't want those two date um, columns to be made longer and everything else should be longer. And so what that gets you is, um, so we've still got our two date columns. Um, we've still, um, but instead of those four columns we had of each of those variables, they have now made, been made into their own column, and we've got it. We've got the value there. So we've basically multiplied our data, our number of rows by four for each of those four, um, those four variables, uh, and we can. So now we can do some manipulation with it. Um, the next step is to create uh, a month and year field. So we've got these date um, strings. We want to create a date, a uh, month and year on every row so that we can do some summary on that. Uh, and we can do this with mutate. Um, so in this case, we're um, creating a new variable called my for month year. And we're just taking a substring from that date field uh, that just captures the month and year. And then we want to make that into two separate columns because that's going to give us one column. We want to separate. Uh, and that's basically just splitting the string uh, on the, the slash character, and that will give us um, the values in month and year. So this is what we get um, with that. So the same data, exactly the same data as before, but this uh, string has been split into month and year columns. The next step is to do the actual summarize. Uh, and so we need to group on the name, that's the name of the, the variable um, that we're, we're interested in, and month and year. Uh, then we call summarize and um, we're updating that value column just to make it a mean uh, and um, this bit is just telling it to ignore empty values um, yeah ignore empty values uh, and so 
based on that, it drops out all the other fields that we don't have in that group by. So it just gives us the name of the variable, the month, the year, and the mean. And there's just one last step, um, which is to put it back into wider format. Um, so it makes it a bit prettier and to, um, so we call pivot wider. I won't go into the parameters there, but um, then we're calling a range, which is just a sorting by, month, by year and month. And this is what we get. This is the full data frame we get. Um, so we've got our month and year, and we've got those four variables, and we've got the mean for each uh, of those months, um, of each month. And so we can see um, back in uh, May, June, July last year, not many people were scanning. Then we had that August lockdown. Suddenly everyone started scanning. We went up to 1.6 million scans a day on average. Uh, and then we dropped back down again. Then early this year, we went back up to over a million. Now in April, uh, we've dropped back down. Um, and we can see that what is probably going to save us is Bluetooth because people, more people are turning on Bluetooth and they're kind of keeping it on even when there's not uh, anything major going on. So anyway, hopefully um, you can see um, that you know, in a few short steps, we've done a reasonably complex uh, manipulation of data and kind of presenting, done some summary uh, and uh, yeah, that is fairly straightforward and kind of reasonably clean code. Uh, and yeah, this is a fairly simple example, but hopefully you can imagine there's uh, much more you can do. Um, all right, I'll leave it there. Um, thanks very much, and yeah, happy to answer questions. Um, yeah, so for a data frame, a data frame, uh, each column in a data frame has to be of the same type. Is that what you're meaning? Yes. So, so the column, so every value in that column, if it's a character, you know, it has to be a character or a string. Um, there are, are, sorry, there are other data types, um, uh, like a list is the main one, where you can kind of be a mix and match a bit more. But for a data frame, it's kind of like a database table. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. Uh, not personally, no. So uh, the most I've used is probably like about 50,000. Uh, yeah. Uh, like yeah. Yeah, um, so I think that... Yeah, so I mean, I think... Um, yeah, it depends on exactly what you're doing and, and why and like... and. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everything is in memory. Um, so there is a version of dplyr which works with a database backend. Uh, I don't know how, um, how kind of complete that is, but, but it does exist. Um, but, yeah, the, the fact that you're doing everything in memory um, has some limitations. Uh, and so I think sometimes when people are comparing those things, they're not comparing the same thing. They're comparing something like to something like Postgres or whatever, um, where it's, yeah, it's not the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's pretty well known that um, yeah, R is not the most you know the fastest, um, so but especially for for very large data sets, but um, uh, but it's often fast enough um, for for most of what people are doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is it is fully vectorized. So um, so for instance, um, what's a good example? Um, yeah, going back to um, these, well, these mutates. You know, it's calling round as, you know, and, and it's essentially it's getting past the column vector to that to that function, and yeah, working vectorized. So yeah, yeah. Are you talking about in terms of performance or just just? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, I mean, I, my you know my kind of native language is Perl, so um, so I find most things a bit uh, harder to use than Perl because it's you know, regex is much more central to Perl. Um, but yeah, it's got all the functionality of yeah, um, of string processing. Uh, so part of Tidyverse is a, a package called Stringr, um, which yeah does a whole lot of string manipulation stuff. So yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Um, yeah, I mean this, this yeah you you probably might need more than just dplyr depending on exactly what you're doing. But yeah, I, I think any kind of manipulation um, of a of a yeah especially just like a table. Like a single table, like a single spreadsheet, and often in academia, well, I, I do a lot of survey research, so often you've just got one spreadsheet essentially, uh, and you need to do a lot of manipulation on that. Um, 
uh, and and that that's where it's that's very useful. Um, but yeah, you can do more than that. Cool. All right. Thank you very much.